Hello everybody, my name is Zen and welcome to the very first episode of Divinity Original Sin 2, the definitive edition. When Larian Studios announced that they got the rights to do Baldur's Gate 3, which is a beloved game of mine, um, the Baldur's Gate series that is, I was like, well, I feel like I have to go back and play Divinity Original Sin 2. I got about 30 hours into it before. I was playing with Ink, who did uh, our Borderlands stuff. So we had a lot of fun playing. I really enjoyed it, but I just kind of fell off and never ended up finishing the game. So as soon as I heard that they're doing Baldur's Gate 3, I was like, I need to go finish Divinity because that was a fantastic game. And I believe their studio is the best people available in the industry at the moment to go and finish that uh, that series up with Baldur's Gate 3 or continue it on with more games. So I figured if I'm going to go back and play the game, I may as well play it for you guys. This is going to be not necessarily a super long series because we tend to do very long episodes nowadays, but we're going to jump in and we're going to play through the entire thing. I'm looking forward to it. Single player, uh, I decided not to play with anybody else. It's complicated to get people in for a long RPG like this. So it's better for me just to play it on my own, especially because I play a lot on my own as far as long RPGs. So classic mode uh, is what we're going to play on. Tactician mode is what I prefer to play on. It's a lot more difficult if you're jumping into Divinity Original Sin 2 for the first time, which by the way, you don't need to know anything from the first game. Um, they're really far apart as far as timeline is concerned. So it, there's not a lot of relevance there, but it, I mean, obviously you played the first game, you know a bit about what's going on. But we're going to do classic mode because I feel like uh, it's what the developers intended. Also, fun little fact, this loading screen, uh, my, because I have a, a chroma keyboard, like the loading screen as it loads, loads on the keyboard. It's really stupid, but really cool. I don't know why I like it so much. So as far as character creation is concerned, you have these origin characters, such as the Red Prince, uh, Sibyl, Ifen, Ifen, Beast. Uh, Losi, Fane, and that's it. So everything else is a custom character. You can do custom of any of the races and uh, any version of undead. So you could do like a custom undead human or undead lizard. We are going to be playing, our main character that we're going to be playing is going to be uh, Losi. Los? Losi. Let's listen to her story real quick and then I'm going to show you what uh, build that I'm setting for her as our preset. My life I've been a performer, a musician, beloved and celebrated by all. But I have a secret. I'm also a playground for sprites and spirits and worse. The voice that rings inside me now is darker than any that came before. <laughs> Almost caused a bunch of my fans to rip each other to pieces. <laughs> but you can trust me. I've got this under control. Step one, find out who or what is trying to take control of my mind. Step two, make it sorry it ever tried. Yeah, so we're, we're going to be playing her. Um, that's going to be our main character. And just like we have done with many of our other massive RPG playthroughs, I'm going to be role playing this character. I'm going to be choosing the choices that they the character itself would choose in most cases. Um, I'm also going to be a ranger. I'm going to adjust some of the stuff here, but yeah, she gets by default two abilities, which I'm not going to jump into really, other than the fact that they, the, the talents she has off the bat are ingenious, which gives you 5% bonus critical chance, 10% extra critical multiplier, and thrifty, which gives you plus one to bartering skill. If you've never played a, like a D&D like game, this is, this is very close to tabletop RPG or as, as close as you can get really. So she's going to be our main character. Everybody else, we're not going to learn the backstory of by listening to these, the backgrounds, because I feel like they just need to happen organically. You know what I mean? Um, you could get other people to join your game. So if you're interested in playing multiplayer, by all means, this game is great multiplayer. But I feel like uh, it kind of ruins the experience that I want to go for in this. So we're going to customize her a bit. She's got a cool helmet. Uh, but as far as her look goes, I think... 
Actually, I quite like the way she looks in general. I'm just going to double check her do, 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 hairstyle. There it is. There's there's some wild hairstyle. Actually, that one's not bad. No, go back. 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 I like that one quite a bit. We may end up doing that one. It reminds me of, uh, what's her book on The Witcher? I don't know why. I just blanked on her name. I like her hair color. I think that's, that's, it works for her. Um, I think that hairstyle works for her because of the spirit things. She's got like, like that shine of white, but honestly, I really like that one. So I think we're going to go with that one. Um, got a weird seam on the neck there. It is what it is. Also, this is the enhanced edition of the game. There's quite a bit of, um, changes that they made to it that work quite well. So I'm looking forward to that. So preset stuff, we're doing Ranger. Uh, I'm going to keep the stats and I think the abilities. I actually may take Pyrokinetic out. So yes, there are there are non-combat abilities. I don't, th th there's too much information to look at. Pyrokinetic increases all fire damage you deal. Um, I'm going to take the point out of that. Now hear me out, out on this one. So let's, uh, let's go look at our abilities real quick. As far as our skills are concerned, we have... Um, a few cool things. We have ricochet that we could choose from, which we are, which is basically a ricochet shot. It's an AOE shot. We have pin down so we can uh, pin a target down. We can put cripple on them. We have a heal and we have elemental arrowheads. Elemental arrowheads allow you to, uh, based on elements on the ground, so like if something's on fire, you can change your arrows to be fire arrows. And that is really strong. I think we should use that because we're not initially going to have a mage in our party and being able to do elemental damage is going to be good. You'll see why. I'll explain this all when we get into the game. I'm not going to explain too much of it here, but I don't really like the pyrokinetic stuff. It allows us to have a couple cool new fire abilities to start with, but it's honestly just kind of... It's, it's, it's a whole lot of okay in my book. So I think we're just going to put a point right into ranged immediately. It's either that or leadership. Um, oh, or... Or, hear me out, I could do, uh, where is it, scoundrel stuff. So I can kind of go roguey, you know, have a little bit of huntsman, have a little bit of rogue. Do I actually, if I put two into huntsman, um, I get bonus damage if I'm attacking from high ground, which is very Star Wars-y. Do I get additional stuff? No, I don't. Okay, so it, it, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one point into huntsman and one point into range and just leave it at that because I'm going to be using a ranged weapon. And then from there, it's kind of, you know, whatever the heck we want. So that allows us to free up. Th there would be another thing here from the pyrokinetic stuff. We're just going to straight up do another version of this. So uh, let's do pin down. I plan on getting a cleric in our party rather early, but this should help with that. So that's, that's the build we're going with. Talents, arrow recovery is really good. Gives you 33% chance to recover special arrows after shooting them. Special arrows are really powerful. We'll be able to put more talents in as we go. We start with Ingenious and Thrifty. Um, tags. So tags determine what options are available to you in dialogue and how the world reacts to your party members. Custom characters have race, gender, and background tags. Origin characters have unique origin tags like Jester and Mystic. So I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. Instruments. I, I get to choose an instrument that I start with, and honestly, it's going to be cello. She looks like a cello player, you know what I mean? Um, I think we're pretty good. Let's zoom out. Is that how I want her to look? Yeah, it's pretty badass. I like it. Start game. Confirm. as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. 
and sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. That's pretty awesome. There's a whole lot of fantasy RPG nonsense that you're going to come across in the story. And you know what? I'm going to let you guys know if you don't if you don't know what any of that is, it's okay. You're going to learn. It's okay. It's it's cool. So, still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. Okay. I'm I'm locked in though. You gotta you gotta unlock me. Bam. We are free. Damn. So here I was hoping my upstairs visitor was just playing tricks on me. So this is by all means a old school RPG. Um, it is top down and the combat is turn based and I really like it. There's a skull there that I could pick up, which I don't think has any. Who are you? Nobody. <laughs> yeah, any any relevance, but you know, it is what it is. Also, I forgot how to turn on sprint, so I'm just going to walk for a second. Okay, it's, it's doing it on its own. Junk. As a bucket, I can equip that bucket as a helmet. I'll, like, I'll grab both of those actually. I think it's funny that equipping a bucket as a helmet um, gives you minus one initiative. <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. Uh, there was a woman here a moment ago. I can look at this. Nothing in there. Uh, they changed, by the way. If you've played Divinity before, move item, move objects by clicking and dragging on them. Thank you. They changed uh, how some of this works. The, the, this boat has um, has another floor to it, so I'm kind of curious how this is going to work. So this little tutorial thing, you can move the boat to open the door to come into here. Hey, a sheep! Is there a sheep in here? There is. I don't remember that. I think this is enhanced edition stuff. There's a bucket with water. Um, can I talk to sheep? Shaking her fluffy coat, the sheep eyes you balefully. Her rectangular eyes like letterboxes to the void. With one sharp hoof, she kicks you right in the shin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think I'm going to turn up the... I just realized that the, the volume on that is really low compared to the rest of the game. Not quite sure why. Let's go ahead and turn that up a bit. See if that makes a difference. So, of course, we've got random things to loot. You know what? I'm going to take that egg. I'm okay with that. Got some chests over here, which, ooh, one's got 10 gold. Uh, the food can heal you and whatnot, so I guess I'll take some of that. And this appears to be locked. locked uh, this, this lock seems intricate. You should search for its keys. So, I'm unsure Did where... Did you expect a needle? Yes. No, I expected keys. I'm unsure where the keys might be, so we will come back once we find them. I am excited though. I forgot how awesome this game actually is and now that I'm back in it, I'm like, hmm. I can't wait to figure things out uh, like this. So we have a situation where we can't get past that door, but we can go up here. Do you sure want to leave the tutorial deck? Nope, I do not. Um, I want to find us some keys. I think you can also rotate the camera um, but I don't remember quite how to do that. Does he have the keys? Can I kill him and take the keys? I can also just break down the door. That's also an option. Uh, oh, there's more gold there. I didn't see why that is. Give me one second. I'm going to double check to see how to flip the camera. It's strangely delete and end on, <laughs> on the keyboard. That's a... Uh, that's a that's a pretty weird one. I'm gonna go check this vase. Actually, there actually might be. Um, yep. Okay. There's our key. So now we can get through here. I kind of liked that angle, so we'll kind of stick to it. Although I assume that we will be um, changing that stuff as we go. I'm gonna take a look at that letter. Let's see what's in it. Read. 
orders from Guard Stewart. Important, it's come to my attention again that several of you are bypassing the cargo hold security measures by sliding boxes onto pressure plates. This will not do. The purpose of these measures is to require the presence of at least three magisters at a change of shift. Any deviation will result in at least one magister getting thrown overboard. Make sure it isn't you. Okay. Uh, not a lot of inventory space here, but I'm gonna take I'm gonna take everything except the plate. This is like Skyrim. If there's a uh, if there's a broom, I might even consider it. There's nothing really left in this room aside from that, which I think is nothing in it. Can we go this way? Is that gonna open? Mechanisms. This door is operated by pressure plates. Stand on them or move heavy heavy, heavy objects on them. So if I take this and put that there, that does that. Uh, and then of course, if I take, ooh, is there anything in the barrel? It's a pocket knife. I've got a shank. I'm a prisoner and I've got a shank. Cool. And come down here. I love it. Game saved. I'm slowed. Surfaces. You've stepped in oil. Oil surfaces can slow you down and can also be ignited. Every surface has its own effects. And that is true. You have a lot of that kind of stuff that happens in combat and it's really quite cool. Ooh, this is like way different than how the game originally started. This, this is fascinating to me. Can I talk to him? Hello? Hey, hey, get me out of this cage and I'll make it worth your while. You in? Uh. I don't know if I want to get involved with this guy. Why is it? Why is he in the cage in the first place? Your guess is as good as mine. Someone screamed loud as a banshee. After that, pure pandemonium. They never even told me what I was accused of. Just dragged me down here. What exactly is in it for me? Set me free, and I'll set you free. A fair trade, I should think. I'll. I'll. I'll come back. I'm not, I'm not committing to that yet. I don't know if I need to get him out, especially because there's a guard here. That's the thing with divinity. There's always ooh, electrical discharge <laughs> scroll. Uh, oh, it's already on my bar. Cool. Um, there's always different ways to finish these. Um, you don't really need to always do the most obvious thing. There's, there's other options. I'm going to walk through the water here. Hello, sir. The Magister Guard snorts and sniffles as he sleeps. You're almost impressed that one man can make such a phlegmy racket. <sighs> Is my shift over? Are you here to relieve me? Wait, you're no Magister. You're a sorcerer. What are you doing here, filthy scrounger? Choose your words carefully. Oh. My fists ache to meet a new face. I didn't. I didn't really consider the fact that he would be like, there's a prisoner that's loose. Um, constitution persuasion. Tell him that you've heard heard yelling coming from above. He needs help up there. Yeah, whip persuasion. Salute him and say he's his superior sent you. Or finesse persuasion. Laugh and tell him one of the guards on the upper deck fell overboard. He should check it out. Or tell the guard you're aging for a fight and he's your mark. Or tell them the truth. You're snooping around. What's he going to do about it? That seems like a bad idea. Let's do a finesse persuasion. Successful. <laughs> Those idiots can't even walk straight without mucking it up. <laughs> was it Ricks? <laughs> I bet it was Ricks. I can't just leave the prisoner alone, though. I heard he might be the one causing trouble upstairs. Um, I could do a strength, intelligence, or memory persuasion. I don't feel like my character's really smart or strong, but her memory, because she's ingenious. So, I don't know, maybe that's it. Speaks boastfully of your days as a prison warden. The guard can go ahead. You've got this. Or remark on the sturdiness of cell bars. The prison is not going anywhere. Actually, that's true. That probably that actually makes a lot of sense. But I think I'm going to do the memory persuasion. Failure. Your persuasion two needed to, Your persuasion zero needed two. Okay. If it's all the same, I think it's best he comes with me. Some offense intended. You hear that, Emoir? We're taking a walk. That's fine. I didn't want to deal with him anyways. Can I open that? Is he going to get mad at me? I don't really want to walk in there accidentally. Keep your hands where I can see them. Okay, they're doing their thing. I'm going to look around. Ah, locked. Try a lock pick Hurry on this up, door. Sorcerer, we haven't got all day. 
They. Oh. Oh. Somebody will have to take the blame for I'm on fire now. And it won't be. Um. Okay. So you have action points on your turn. Um. You see these these green uh circles. Uh, so if if I move, it's gonna take one action point. I have four action points this turn. One of them will be gone, which is why one of the circles is red. If I move further, it would require more action points, of course. I don't even know if I have a weapon equipped, so let's start with that. Um, I guess equip the shank. Um, I don't have a bow, so it's not like I can shoot arrows. But maybe I just stab this guy to death? I wasn't really expecting him to go into a fight. So the result of that is kind of in a bad spot. Sucker punch. Okay, I can knock him down with that. I can also discharge him with electricity. I'm going to use uh, an AP, just one action point to move and cast encourage on myself. And then I'm gonna end my turn. It's my turn again. Can I do that? Because he's in water. So he gets the, so that is now electrified. So now I, I don't really want to attack. I don't even want to go down there. I want him to come to me. So now I'm gonna end my turn. So he's stunned, perfect. Let's uh, attack him. If I attack him from behind, I get a better attack on him essentially. So we are gonna move and could stab him or I could sucker punch him. He's already stunned, so I'm gonna stab him. Backstab critical. Bam. Stabby stab. Um, and now I'm going to use sucker punch because it's my turn again. Because he he was of course stunned. Boom. Now the bad thing is he killed that guard. And if anybody comes down here, they're gonna be like, what the hell happened? And there's two dead bodies and I'm here. So not ideal. Maybe I should have tried to help him, but not my fault. Hard hard to uh, hard to convince other people of that though. Let's take a look in this room. We've got a empty mug. Don't want that. We'll take a look at these books. Sometimes you get some pretty useful information. Empty potion bottle. If I can brew some stuff, that would be good. So yeah, I'll take a few of those. Right, let's check this chest. Got some gold and stuff for crafting. I am gonna eat. See, this is why I pick stuff up. Let's eat this apple pie. Get some of our health back, which is always good. I've got nothing really else to look at here. Is that a potion? Oh, I think it is. Uh, there's also a minor healing potion over here. That's good. Keeps us alive, of course. I'm gonna try not to get hit by this poison barrel. Move a candle onto the, into the poison surface to set it on fire to blow up the door. Cool. Ow, I'm on fire now. Ah, I should have thought about that. It did say blow up. <laughs> it definitely did. I, I should eat this apple. And this bread. That sucked, but hey, we made it through. No, um, no problem. Look at that. We got rain scroll and empty potion vials. And there's a whole lot of stuff here. What if I move that? Is there anything on? I'm not gonna worry about it. Every now and again, I feel like. Oh, we got some playing cards. Is that a coin? Well, more cards. Um, honestly, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna leave those there. I don't need that. This, if you couldn't tell, is a an RPG, by all means. That opens that. And I'm back where I started. Mm, nowhere to go but up. So I've picked up a couple things, which is good, but now that is the tutorial deck done. Different than what it was before, which I find interesting, because this is where the game picked up before. I like that they have obviously more stuff going on. But. I'll need to write the headquarters right away. Um, I'm just looking at some of this stuff. No, ooh, that gold cup is worth a lot. Let's steal that. <laughs> just gonna take that right away. Why you're looking a bit more chipper? 
Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. There you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. Brutal. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Uh, so I have a couple options to talk to her here. Mention it uh, that there was a little accident in the cargo deck. The prisoner is dead. Uh, lean in and whisper that the magisters below deck suffered a fatal encounter. Or... Hmm. The last thing you remember is holstering your 15th pint. Is this what the ram's head led, led head Lou? Or the mystic say that you had a long black dream about a ship sailing in the river of the dead, but you're not dead, are you? Uh, let's go with... I don't, I don't really want to tell her about the accident. We'll do mystic. No. You're alive and you're having a conversation. You are on a ship, of course, but luckily for us both, we're nearly sailing the plain old sea. Index fingers pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. And you life awaits. And if you're a particularly good girl, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source for good. I feel like if I mentioned that there was an accident in the cargo deck and that it wasn't my fault, that might be better. But what would she do? I don't think she would. Okay, I can open my map. Uh, import characters or important characters will mark destinations on my map. So that's a destination. That's quest marker. Um, what do you think you're doing? End. I'm not trying to do anything. Try to sneak. Okay. I, th I think I made her angry at me briefly. I wasn't trying to take that. Uh, I wasn't trying to take that book, but it ended up kind of being the case that that's what my character tried doing. Good gods. There's, there's been a murder here. Oh, can I open that door? Does, does that go upstairs? No, well, let's, uh, nothing in. Oh. Gotta check everything. <laughs> I want all the gold. Give it to me. This is the perfect game for me. It's like, ooh, I got some lucky thing? What the heck was that? Uh, I can look. You can electrify blood? I don't remember that. I guess you could. Now that I think about it. Let's talk to them. Behind the Magister, a blooded mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. Avoid looking into the room. Between the lurching ship and the smell of blood, you feel a little sick. Well, peer into the room and ask what happened. Yeah. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. Um, let's see if we can... Well, actually, let's do her. So you have, as these characters, as these origin characters, you have specific uh, responses that you get. So I'm going to do hers, which is clap them on the back and say you're sure they have it 100% under control. And to yourself, bloody sorcerer. <laughs> I could talk to her. Um, I don't know if I want to, though. There is a broken source collar. I could take a look at them. Let's talk to the Ugly Magister sight, ones. Isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and follow the source that did this. The void woken are really nasty. <clears throat> Don't want to deal with them. Inform her that she wasn't the man's protector. She was his captor. Or ask why she's letting you so close to the crime scene. Yeah. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. So she knows it wasn't me. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. <laughs> I mean, maybe I can. Uh, ask if she's investigating her fellow magisters as well. well obviously she is. I, I'm just going to tell her it's a trick I haven't quite mastered yet. I thought as much. Listen, 
I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? I'll let her know if I hear anything interesting. Or say that you're no stitch. Snitch, rather. I think our character likes money. I think I gotta play her almost like a rogue, where she's willing to kind of backstab people if it means that she's gonna get paid. But... Also, her number one priority is keeping her mysterious spirit thing a secret. I think that's what we need to do here. Um, but my price is considerably higher than what she's offering, which is one gold coin. Not in here, it isn't. You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. Okay, maybe I will. I would like to look at that body, but hey don't really want to <clears throat> get in trouble for that so we're gonna walk away let's go look all over here got a thing of sacks or something toy wooden block I'll move that I like that there's little tiny items that make the, the world feel alive but I don't need to loot everything who are you an elf sits tucked away in a dark spot lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Uh, wonder what she's doing. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Uh, can she read the future in cow entrails as well? Now, let's ask whose fate she's deciding. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. Good. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. Hmm. If she can decide fate with dice, ask if she's if she can read the future. No, that seems like I don't want to be like you're a witch. Decide is probably best to take your leave. Oh, uh, maybe actually. Let's let's see where this goes. She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it too. That's good storytelling. That's like. They're they're telling you like, hey, this is what elves can do in, in the world. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? Uh, you don't you don't see why not. Extend your arm, okay? Yeah. She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue. Weird. Efficient, like a cat grooming. <laughs> <laughs> you were in a cellar with other sorcerers, a dark, dank place. I remember it well. As everyone lay sleeping, you sat in the dark with wakeful eyes, looking rather lovingly at <laughs> me. Uh, okay, we're learning something about our character. <laughs> My, aren't you a pretty cup full of sugar and spice? Stare at the ground, embarrassed you had you had quite forgotten about that, or admit wide-eyed, that's exactly right, or snap at her. She doesn't know what in the seven hell she's talking about. No, she, it's uh. Uh, be embarrassed. She pats you on the shoulder consolingly. There, there, don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. <laughs> it's really weird. Elves are weird. Now we got a guy up here. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face. He stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens. And beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I bet three months' pay it's this tramp Ifan. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. We move closer. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Oh, thank you. Pinches less that way, right? Uh-huh. Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. Ask him why the magister is suspects him of murder? Yeah. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan. The tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. I see. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is, somebody gave him a bigger sword, and now he's Johnny Big Pants. 
<laughs> uh, asked him what he did find himself at the mercy of a subordinate. Say that you're still curious about the murder. Did he do it? No. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. Say that you're still curious about the murder. Did he do it? No. Okay. The dead man. Finn, is it? I had no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances Fair. over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. Ask him if he knows anything about where you're headed, Fort Joy. The Joy? I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the Ringmaster himself. Say so you'd like to meet Alexander? You'd show him exactly where you, what you think of his bloody divine order, or tell if in that one acquaintance you're not eager to make, or say you've no interest in Alexander, you care about surviving for Troy. Yeah, actually, I think that's what she would say. Not interested in the son of the divine himself. <laughs> I don't blame you one bit, but Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. So who is the son of the divine? Who is the divine? We will find out. What are you conspiring about over there? You? What's your name? They're obviously important. Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. <laughs> name? Uh... I... Tell him that your name is Victor. That's right, Victor. Yeah, let's do that. Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Mm. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips as he leans back against the wall. That's hilarious. I feel like, um, yeah, that is exactly what she would do. Not tell him the correct name. You guys talking about? Well, well, what have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Uh, I'm gonna humor him and see where it leads. Hmm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can uh, you cook? Can I cook? Say that you can hardly tell a turkey from a turnip. <laughs> tell them you're not. Well, I mean, she's kind of a bard, right? She's like a musician. I'm sure she's known how to cook. Um, because. Oh, well, I don't know. I was going to say a starving musician thing, but. I guess that, that could lead into the fact that she is literally a starving musician. Maybe she doesn't know how to cook. Now, tell them that she's a wizard in the kitchen, a true chef. Oh. Music to my beleaguered stomach. What? On to the second question. Can you knit, weave, in short, uh, tailor? Uh, uh, tell him the. Okay, most certainly tell him, given a sheet of satin, you can make a bum look like a baron. Oh, but to feel the caress of satin on my scarlet skin once more. A most satisfactory answer indeed. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. Uh, just, just keep chewing your hair. It was already in your mouth anyway. I like her, her option. Dear Lord, I might as well try and teach mathematics to a dog chasing its tail. <laughs> so, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can cook and tailor... But your personal hygiene reminds one of a carcass rotting in the sun. <laughs> Still, beggars can't be choosers. So without further ado, I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. <laughs> Stare at him blankly. He thinks you're his what now? My slave, of course. Oh, but <laughs> I see. Yes, I, I suppose it must take some time for the full extent of this honor to sink in. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now shoot. Goody. I get to be his slave. Obviously, I'm. I'm I like humoring him, but I'll make him my slave. 
It's a whole lot of stuff here. There's a bottle of beer. We'll take that. It's a mug of beer. Can we just skip sure. the part where I reassure you and you shut up? There's a angry dwarf here, which is the best kind of dwarf. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, ghetto. You hear that? Uh, girl, tell him he ought to think twice before addressing you like a child. Well, no, I think she, she's probably dealt with dwarves before, and that's, like, their thing. Um, ask what you're meant to be hearing, or wave his request away and ask him what he knows about the murder. I'm like, no, I'll do the second one. The ship, of course. Quiet, and listen to the sound of the ship. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash, and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And... Tell him the ship is moaning like a sick man. Say the sea sounds angry, like it's trying to capsize the ship. Or remark that your shipmates are chatty, or as chatty as gulls. You can barely hear of that now. The ship is moaning like a sick man. Sick as a leper's cat. From the state of it, I'd say she's being cared for by a bunch of beardless babes who never loved anyone but their own mums. But there's more. Listen close. Close your eyes and try to let the ambient sounds on the ship fade away. There now, just like that. Squeak! Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There, you heard it, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, ghetto. Good news. Uh, ask what got him so excited. That was... Nothing more than a rat. No, you beautiful idiot. That wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Wow, he's he's got this on lock. Pardon my beard. That means if we've been traveling for, yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Uh, tell him he shouldn't talk like that about such a magnif magnificent beard. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Ah, so you have eyes as well as ears, eh? You'll go far, mate, even here. Ask why he's so excited about reaching Fort Troy. You haven't heard anything good about the place. Yeah, no indeed, ghetto. But that ain't my final destination. I like this guy. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, ghetto. Talk an eyebrow. If he's hatching an escape plan, you want in. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. Huh. I see. Your kind always hung closest to uh, I could talk to Gil. What does he want? You one of them? A divine order loyal? They killed a sorcerer, you know. They'll hide the evidence well enough, but make no mistake. Okay. I realize I didn't actually talk to, um... I'm looking around here. Didn't actually talk to the female dragon person. Lizard person. I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Meanwhile, the magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. The indignity. I see. Okay, so let's look at the rest of this. There's some creepy kids over there. There's a guard who's pacing back and forth. Who's this guy? The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out and takes your hand, turning it this way and that, examining it from every angle. Finally, he pinches your skin, gently tugging at it. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book. Flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. <laughs> Pull a long face. You thought he wanted to hold hands. I have already examined it and found it quite ordinary. What more could I possibly... Oh! Oh, dear. I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How difficult. You have my apologies, human. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. Uh, you look at him curiously. You're not sure he understands what's happening. Yes. Perhaps. 
Perhaps not. Understanding is all rather relative. Take this book, for example. I understand all of it, and yet none of it makes sense. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. <laughs> Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Tell him you're pretty sure some stuff has happened at some point, but then some even say it continues to do so. <laughs> Most unusual. And if it's not too rude to suggest, not much of an answer. No, I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? Um, let's do our mystic answer. You have often pondered the nature of the gods, but you don't have any sure answers. <sighs> of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Now please run along. I have a world to decipher. I can insist. Why was he so curious about the gods? No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. I see. Okay. We have a magister here. We have a locked door. Here's the register, ma'am. Good, good. Magister Williams has just about done with the last passenger. You fair and okay so far? Uh... Ask if he'd be fine, collared like a dog, stuck in a ship's hold with a corpse and a murderer on the loose. He tugs the collar of his uniform and chuckles. I'm sorry you're upset, ma'am, but we all wear what we wear for a reason. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Cool. Guess we're going in. Um, what's going on with this crazy lady? Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. Hmm. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. I like how her name is Windigo. Like, you know, the, like, ancient, uh... Uh, what are they called? Well, I guess they are called Windigos, but you know what I mean. Like, they're weird, like, creatures. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God! The woman's mad! You there, sorcerer! Go and fetch Magister Siwan! We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. Um... Address the sorcerer and ask her what she meant by there are others whose lives must end. Yeah. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... Uh-oh. She reaches for her collar and simply removes uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. I'm just about to create a scene. So the collars kind of keep you from being super powerful. So do her, man, quickly. If she casts swords, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. And we're in a fight. And she's going first. And then I go. She's using Source Blast. Oh, jeez. Knocked everybody down and she teleports out. She's gone. What the heck? Hey, I'm not dead. And what? I still got as much HP. What's happened? And I got 400 XP. Well, uh, chapter one. The Merry Walker, Merry Maker, something like that. I like how the first thing I do is go and examine the bodies because I want their loot.